All right, let's set this charger up and go ahead and start charging this 3S battery. When I press the start button the first time, the current is going to start flashing. This is at 1.5. I can hit the plus and increment or the minus and decrement. If you press it and hold it, it will start rapidly changing. This battery will go ahead and set it up for 2 amps because it is capable of handling that much charge current. Now this says 14.8. Most importantly it says 4S because typically on the batteries we, we refer to them by the number of cells in series. So this is a 3S. I'm going to hit decrement and it's going to say 3S. And then I'm going to press the start button. So now this is set up for a balanced charge on 2 amps for a 3S battery. Now I'm going to press and hold the charge button. A battery check is completed and then there's a report. It says that we selected a 3S and it read a 3S. These should always match. If for some reason they don't, check all the settings. Check the number of cells on your battery and check the setting that you selected. Then once that's there we can go ahead and press start and the charge cycle to start. If you don't press start after you see the 3S uh, it re references, then it will just time out and the charge cycle will never start. So we're currently putting in 2 amps. The voltage that's being read right now is 11.65 volts. So this is a brand new battery that's never been charged uh, since I received it. The fan has kicked on now in the charger and the other fan noise that you heard is the power supply. Power supply indicates that it's supplying about 30 watts right now of power at 2.124 amps. The extra current that's not going into the battery is being consumed by the charger and the charger fan and so forth. As we look at this, you'll see the time that the charger has been running. And this is the milliamps of current that has been supplied to the battery. So the battery so far has uh, taken 27, 28 amps of, uh, milliamps of current and it's been running for one minute. So we're going to go ahead and let this charge cycle run until it's complete. One of the things you can do while the charge cycle is running is press the, press the increment button. One of the things that you can do when the charge cycle is running is press the increment One of the things you can do while the charge cycle is running is press the increment button. The charger will now display the cells, individual cells, and what their current status is. We're looking at 3.9 volts, 3.91, and 3.9 on those three cells. When the charge cycle is finished, these will be very, very close to 4.20. They'll be 4.1, 4.2, or 4.21 in that neighborhood. This allows you to look at all of the cells that you're charging and when you keep pressing increment it will come back to the main charge so you can see how long the charge is running and how much current has been supplied to the battery so far. The charge cycle is complete now. You can see that up in the upper left hand corner it's toggling between LiPo 3S, that's the battery, and full it indicates it's in balance mode. The charge time was 28 minutes and it took 732 milliamps. The ending voltage was 12.59. Pressing the increment button we can see that each of the cell voltages now is 4.20 volts. This is what they should be at the end of a normal cycle and they all should be the same as they are. So this shows a fully charged battery. Compress the increment and I can go back to the original screen. So 4.2 times 3 is 12.6, so we're showing a fully charged battery. And that's all we have to do for LiPo battery charges using any charger that has a similar user interface. As a matter of safety, always ensure that you disconnect the battery from the charger before you disconnect the charge cords. The reason for this is these car charge cords then are connected to the output of the battery and if they're shorted together it'll be a high current situation. We're ready to charge this battery. I've selected 3 amps and 14.8 volts. 
You'll remember that the power supply that we're using has a 3.5 amp limit on it. So we're going to start charging this battery. The battery check is going to go through. We see the four serial, four serial, so that in, that's correct. That's what we selected and that's what was read, so we'll start the cycle. We see 15.36 volts and we see the charge current going up. As the current is coming up, the load on the power supply is increasing. What you've just seen is what can happen to you if the power supply is not capable of delivering the current that you've selected for the charger. In this case, the current was exceeding 3.5 amps and the power supply shut it off. So you saw the unit turn off and turn back on. And you'll notice now that it says charge. So this is what happens when we turn the power off and turn the power back on. What I have to do to correct for that problem is lower the charge current. So we've got now two and a half amps, so let's go ahead and try this. Again, the battery check is going to be completed. Four serial, four serial, so we're ready to go. And now we're going to see the charge cycle start up again. 15.41 volts, the timer started and the current's increasing. Okay, and I'm looking at the power supply. We're just staying below the current limit. It's the total current being drawn right now is 3.3 amps. And I know you see 2.5 amps here, so where's the rest of the current going? It's in operating the charger itself and operating the fan. So there is not 100% efficiency. If there were, then the supply would only have to provide 2.5 amps and the 2.5 amps would go to the battery. So we're going to go ahead and let this charge and it should not take long to complete the charge cycle. We're now at the end of the charge cycle of the 4S battery. We can see that the final voltage on the 4S battery is 16.79 volts. The current that was put in was 427 milliamps and this took 24, uh, 24 minutes and 25 seconds. Looking at the cell uh, readings, we see that all of them except C2 is reading 4.20 and C2 is reading 4.19. That's an acceptable balance. I'm going to go through some of the setup and error conditions at this time. We're going to press stop to leave the LiPo charge setting. And by pressing battery type, we'll go over until we see the user set program select start. This charger is capable of charging several different types of lithium batteries. I press the start and you can see that the voltage starts to flash. Standard voltage for a LiPo is 3.7 volts. If I press the increment button we'll see the lithium ion type of battery which standard voltage is 3.6 volts and if I press the increment we'll see the lithium ferrite batteries and the standard voltage is 3.3 volts. So by using this option, you can set the type of LiPo battery that the charger is going to be looking for when it's in the LiPo charge mode. This also has a check time. So there's check time of 10 minutes for the LiPos. This can be varied. You can increase it or decrease it. Nickel metal hydride sensitivity. This is for the Delta Peak charging, which is a... Uh, a good way to charge nickel cadmium and nickel metal hydride batteries. So the default setting on this, I've never uh, seen a need to have to change this. Nickel cadmium. The temperature cutoff. Some of the chargers have the ability to uh, connect a temperature device. The temperature sensor looks like this. And uh, what happens is this is plugged into the end of the charger when the charger has that support and it's attached. Uh, you can tape it or use Velcro or rubber bands. You can attach this to your battery. And the charger will monitor the temperature of the battery. As the battery starts to overheat, then it'll shut the charger off. This is a safety factor. Not all chargers have that capability. 
the waste time. When you're charging to discharge on cycling, and this will allow you to cycle nickel, uh, NICAD batteries, it's also good to cycle other batteries to make sure the battery is uh, reaching its full potential for charge and discharge. And this is the wait time, how long it waits between a charge and a discharge cycle. It's set for one minute, and that's usually adequate. This is the trickle charge for nickel metal hydride, NICAD, and lead acid batteries. Once it's fully charged, this charger will switch over to a trickle charge mode, and it supplies 50 milliamps of trickle charge. This is a feature that not all chargers have. This one has that, and uh, it's good if you're going to have batteries there that need to be maintained the charge over a period of time. So this will charge it and shut it back instead of shutting, shutting the charger all the way off. This is a safety timer. The safety timer allows the charger to shut off if the battery that's being charged is not fully charged within the time limit, in this case two hours. This timer is turned off. So the charger is set in a mode right now that it'll charge as long as the battery has not reached full charge. This is good for in case you're, tr you're charging a battery that's defective and it won't reach a full charge, this has the ability to shut it down. With 120 minutes, most batteries, if you charge them at 1C, they should charge fully within 60 minutes. And this one allows us to uh, charge a battery at 1 half C, which is good for NICADs, nickel metal hydrides. And if it doesn't reach full charge within 120 minutes, it'll shut it off. You can change the length of the time for uh, slower charge rates, or you can uh, shorten the length of time if you'd like. This is the capacity cutoff. This one's turned off and it's set to 5,000 milliamp hours. Like the safety timer, what this does is allow the charger to shut the charge cycle down if the battery is not fully charged after receiving 5,000 milliamp hours of charge current. This is in case you have a defective battery and it continues to take charge even after uh, it's reached this 5,000 milliamp hour point. This can be decreased, and it should be if you typically charge batteries that are, let's say, 3,000 milliamp hours or less, then you should decrease this value. Um, 5,000 milliamp hours would definitely indicate that something's wrong with the charger pack, the battery pack. And this is just some audible feedback whether the key beeps every time, and at the end of the charge cycle, does it beep for you? This is input power low, and I'm going to demonstrate the input power low in just a moment. So if the, char the power coming into the charger reaches 10 volts or less, then the charger is going to go ahead and, and give you a warning. This is to basically uh, help you in case you're charging from an auto battery and you don't want to over-discharge the battery from your car. And that's the end of the optional setups for the user set program. I'm going to demonstrate what happens when the input voltage to the charger decreases below the threshold set in the user settings. The setting default is 10 volts and I'm going to start decreasing the voltage and we are currently at, we're currently at the LiPo charge stage and we see input VOL error. That's an input voltage error. If you were in a charge situation the charger would have shut down the charge process and gives you this indication. So this is a, just telling you that the input voltage is decreased. That can happen if you're using a wall charger and the capacity of the charger is too low and the voltage starts to fall. It also can happen if you're using a vehicle, the battery on a vehicle, and the voltage starts to get too low, in our case 10 volts. This input voltage error was triggered at 9.92 volts and the limit is set at 10 volts. I'm going to demonstrate another common error that happens with chargers and the charge cycles. We're set up to do a 2 amp charge of a 4S battery and presently I have the 4S battery connected to the balance plug but what I haven't done is connected the main power cord to the battery. So we're going to start this charge cycle. When the battery check is complete, we have a connection break. What the charger is telling you is that when it went out and took a look at the battery, it did not find the voltage on the main connection to the battery. So this can be a fault in the connector. 
to the battery. It can actually be a fault in the wires going to the battery, or it can be a, a fault in the cable that goes from the charger to the battery. Any of those conditions can cause this error. I'm going to demonstrate another type of error that can occur when you're trying to charge. Again, we have this set up to do a 2 amp charge on a 4S battery. And I'm going to start the process. It's doing a battery check. It tells me it has a 4S and a 4S, so we're going to go ahead and start that. It looks normal. And now the charging cycle is beginning. And we have a battery voltage error, cell connection. In this case, what I've done is I've left the balance plug disconnected. And since I'm in a balance charge mode, this is important. What the charger is telling us at this point is that one of the cells, at least one of the cells, is too low for a balance charge. And that could possibly indicate a defective cell in this particular battery and it's an indication for you to go and check and see what is going on. To clear errors all we have to do is press the stop button. Okay, we're looking at the battery voltage error cell connection uh, message again. Another thing that you can do is go ahead and press the plus and this will allow you to look at the voltage, the current voltage on each of the cells and in this case of course we have the balance plug disconnected so all the voltages are reading zero if this were a real battery with one cell bad by looking at the voltages we'd be able to tell which of the cells is not up to charge this is going to demonstrate why we like to use balance charging instead of uh, just a straight charge in this case I have the same setup the balance plug is not connected if I had a bad cell in this battery and it's reading an abnormally low voltage, it wouldn't be detected. So I'll go ahead and set this up with a 2 amp charge on a 4S battery. Press start. And I still see 4S and 4S. If the bad cell is low enough, then this may read 4S and 3S. In that case, you'd know there's a problem and you could stop at that point. We're going to go ahead and continue and now we're into the charge cycle when you're in the charge mode all of the charge current is going through the main leads of the battery nothing is going into the balance plug and the charger is not monitoring the balance plug so this shows you one of the reasons that you'd like to it's best to always balance charge your battery so you can have a better view of what's going on with your batteries and detect uh, problems earlier